Are we fit to tax digitalized businesses? Um, it depends how you define the digital economy. And during the panel yesterday, it was already said that it's expansive. And unfortunately, we are kind of using tunnel vision to look at what the digital economy means. It's not just Facebook, Google, uh, Amazon. It's also mobile money transactions. It's, uh, as said just during this panel today, it's also the ability of pe for people to access loans over their mobile phone. Yeah. So it's first of all, you need to expand what we look at as a digital economy in order to understand: can we are we fit to tax it? So on one hand, I'll tell you we're already taxing part of the digital economy. Whether that's the right way of taxing it or not is another question. But the fact is we're taxing mobile money, we're taxing financial transactions over the phone in general, which means that any loans you're receiving on the phone are also being taxed. The transaction fees are being taxed. So what you're really asking me about, I suppose, is the business that multinationals are doing in our countries and the ability of um, domestic companies in Kenya to use uh, websites that are domains outside of Kenya to earn income, right? So any advertising services over Airbnb or Booking.com or the ability of, of you or I to use Amazon to purchase goods, but there's no VAT paid on those items. So there's a few things. Um, yes, we have the ability. On one hand, when it comes to um, demanding that you declare your income, right? So. From the perspective, and this is purely from the perspective of value-added taxes, South Africa has been doing it since 2014. They have essentially required that um, companies that are engaging, well, non-resident companies engaging in any service, providing any e-services in South Africa, are required to register for VAT purposes. Right. So, if you're selling to any residents within South Africa, and that has meant that they're also able to collect data about how many companies are actually providing services in their space without having a physical presence, which is a great first step for a country. So Kenya is now taking the next step. Um, we're also about to introduce VAT on e-commerce. Um, I mean, the rule has been there since 2013. Unfortunately, it's not been implemented because, of course, the data is not available. So it is possible to tax it. The bigger, bigger, bigger question is actually about corporate tax. Um, so let's move away from indirect tax because indirect tax is a little easier to navigate, especially when you're dealing with um, this is your obligation, we know you're selling these items to these individuals. Or what has happened in India, uh, India required the equalization levy, which is a withholding tax of 6%, um, that businesses that were using advertising services online were required to pay before they pay the business, so you withhold the 6%. Of course that's easier, you're asking the individuals who are present in your country to pay the tax on behalf of the company. Now the challenge is, we actually want the income that these companies are earning in our countries. So <clears throat> that's what the global debate is about. Are we fit to tax these global companies that are earning income in our countries without physical presence? We have to remember that physical presence is, is what gives us the right to tax, right? Um, it's, what, it was, it's what has been used for time immemorial to define the taxing rights of a, of, of a country. So if you're physically present um, and there's some thresholds that you meet, then I have the right to claim that the income earned here will be taxed. Now, unfortunately, with a digital company, with a digital-based company, yeah, with e-services, you actually can't determine where it's based. Things like domain might might be jumping from country to country. Um, the fact that the, the buyer is in this country, the sellers might be in different countries. Or, for example, on, on, on Google, I don't know if you've ever seen... Um, it asks you about a restaurant you've visited, right? And then that data is given to the restaurant, but that data is given to the restaurant through many different domains, right? So <clears throat> you're also providing um, a value addition to Google and to the physical business there. But how do you tax that type of a service? That requires a lot of information. A lot of information that we might not yet be able to process because as at present, and as I said during uh, my session, we're not, currently even utilizing a lot of the country by country report uh, information and if we haven't even gotten to the place where we're able to use that information the next step of transparency to tax the digital economy is understanding users customers the amount of data being collected in your country processing that data is difficult do we have the facilities to process that data um, <clears throat> getting that data from companies is probably the, even the the mountain the mountainous task right uh, because you cannot 
you cannot compel companies to provide that data. It's private data. They, there must be protection of, of the data in general. And um, it's, I think, anyway, in my opinion, um, it's a higher threshold <clears throat> in asking what companies should be reporting. It's going to be difficult. That's what the global debate is about, as I've said. So whether or not we're fit, I, I don't know. <laughs> we, are, we have a lot to consider. Yeah, our ability, our ability to process that data.